Hello and welcome to Lab View Advantage. And finally, this is the third part of the why and how to use object-oriented programming presentation from the CLT Summit. In this video, we'll discuss about how to implement the application using different methods of writing a code. Before we go deeper, I just want to give a little bit introduction on what the class and object is in LabVIEW. So class is made up of the data and method VIs, and data is like a cluster. So whenever we implement a class in an application, it is called an object. In this instance, uh, you can see two different classes here, log data class and signal class. Uh, both of them has got their own private data, as you can see, the read key over there. So the log data class has got the file path as a data type and signal class has a numeric data type. And they have got their own uh, specific methods to access that data. When you write a code using object-oriented programming, you will have benefits like encapsulation. Encapsulation allows the data to be private. That means only the VIs belonging to the particular class can access that data. It promotes maintenance as other VIs outside the class cannot access. The end of the feature of object-oriented programming is inheritance. The child classes can reuse the common functionalities that has been inherited from the parent class and they can also extend the functionalities. They can have additional unique data and functionalities than their parent. Inheritance is performed by overriding dynamic dispatch VIs. If you see the class diagram, as you can see, the log CSV data and log XML data class, they are both inheriting from the log data class. We'll cover uh, this and more uh, during the demo. Now let's get into the demo. Uh, consider in initially the functionality was to acquire the data and log the data into the .csv file. But now we also have the additional functionality to update the XML file with latest high value data. So how we actually go doing it. So we'll move now into the demo. This is the demo project. I'll be sharing this code uh, in the GitHub library so you can access it. Uh, first of all, we'll uh, look into the task-based application uh, without the added functionality. As you can see, uh, this VI runs uh, and then simulates the signal and then logs the data accordingly. It has got three states, uh, the initialize, main, and stop. So uh, what this application is doing, it, it is initializing the sub VI and then logging the data and then the status whenever it is required. And As you can see, this code is very problem specific. So you cannot actually reuse the code and you can also see the code inside the sub VI. It is just the CSV code. Now let's compare with the object-oriented design. So we'll move into the next folder. And as you can see, the functionality does not change. It remains the same. This is what we're discussing about the developer experience. So as you can see, uh, rather than writing the code for each and every uh, function we need to do or operation, what we did is we actually developed the module uh, that can take care of all the file I operation in this particular application. So it has got three commands, initialize, uh, log, which is going to log the data, and finally the close. So which is going to clear the CIF register inside my module. So in this case, uh, before I actually log the data, I, I initialize my module and log the data whenever I need it. And finally, uh, once I'm done, I'll close the module. 
So in this way, my code is highly reusable. I can reuse this code into the different kind of application. And not only that, I can modify only the internal content of my code. Uh, similarly, I also have two different modules to handle uh, different kind of generating the signal and performing some operations so that I can reuse it again and again. Uh, the specific difference between the previous code and this code is basically the data and methods are provided the responsibility object-oriented design module. Unlike the previous two examples, in this case, uh, the cubes into the left-hand side are the objects implementation. As you can see, there are two of them, Lock CSV data class. And uh, you can use the modules or the method VIs of that class to perform some operation. So if you open this one, it shows two different implementation of that one. Uh, we'll cover that afterwards. But at this point of time, if you go to the main VI, uh, as you can see, the two different class objects are performing the operations using their own method classes. And finally, in the stock, you are performing the same thing. So the most benefit part of using the object-oriented programming is to actually know like, which really belongs to which data object and so on. It makes much more readable, but we'll find a significant advantage when we'll be adding new functionality. The only difference between the object-oriented design and object-oriented programming is object-oriented programming is going to enforce the object-oriented design methodology. So before we move on, uh, I'll expand this. As, as you can see, uh, in these three classes, uh, we got the uh, their data, which is private, and then the different methods to access the data. Uh, so let us go with the added functionality. In the added functionality, as we discussed before, uh, we just have to log the maximum value in the XML file rather than the CSV. I'm not going to run the functionality because it's the same thing, same application, only the added functionality. So when we had to add the functionality to the task-based programming, what we need to do is we need to add a new code over there. And it will make more problem specific. This is the code for the XML logging. So I'll close that one. I'll show you that code again. Now we'll move into the object oriented design. If you look very carefully, we created another module for the XML file as well. So in the beginning, we initialize the XML file module. As you can see, it has got three commands. So it will log the data whenever the status is high. And then we'll, whenever we go to the main, uh, we are logging the data into the, using the log command for the XML module. And finally, we'll close the module. Again, the functionality does not change. It remains the same, but the your readability and then the maintainability of your code improves significantly. Uh, finally, we move into the object-oriented programming. Uh, before we open, I'll show you we have added a new class here, which is called log XML data class. So if you go into the LabVIEW class hierarchy, if you see, uh, there's a parent class called log data, and that is actually yeah, inherited into two child classes. One is the log XML, and another one is the log. And uh, you can also see that, like a uh, log like data class, the parent class has got a VI called log data, and the child class also has got the VI called log data. 
If you open the log data of the parent class, it is just the abstraction VI that basically means it does not contain any code. But this is used to be overridden or dynamic polymorphic uh, call by the child classes. For example, the log CSV class and then the XML class can access this VI during the runtime. And similarly, I'll show you the log data of this one. Uh, but the requirement is like uh, when you are performing the overriding or the dynamic polymorphism, uh, the connector pane of the parent class VI and then the child class VI should be same. So you close that one, okay. And now let us go to the object oriented demo. So if you look very carefully, like uh, this is the initialized state, as you can see, we just added one functionality over there. And then in the main, although this work code works perfectly fine, we'll show you how we can implement the dynamic polymorphism in LabVIEW. So we'll go back to the main and we'll modify the code to log the data uh, since both of the log data VIs actually has got the same connector pane. Now we'll build an array of these two class objects and then pass it through to the log data method VI. When we connect, we'll see that it has been changed to the parent class VI. It is because uh, we have provided two different child classes. So whenever we run this VI, the parent class VI is going to point to the respective child class VI. This is how the dynamic polymorphism takes place in object-oriented programming in LabVIEW. Once the code is complete, we'll run the VI and then see the results. So you can go to the IO folders and then see whether the XML and then the CSV file has been logged properly. Next time, we'll be covering when to use the object-oriented programming and then the brief comparison between the task-based approach and then the object-oriented programming. I hope you like this video. Please like, share, and comment on this video. And please do not forget to subscribe for future lab.